Todd Francis actually said that he planned an escape route from the art department in his office, which included jumping out of a second story window. My name is Levi and this is Shred Shop Connect You to Skateboarding. And today we're doing 14 things you didn't know about real skateboards. In this video, we're gonna talk about how the company started, why they had death threats coming to their office, how Mark Gonzalez got added to the team, famous graphics, and much more. As always guys, the best way to support us to give you the videos that you want is to like, subscribe, and comment, and always support your local skateboard shop. Tommy Guerrero. His first sponsor was an aluminum skateboard company called A Lot of Flex Skateboards. After a little hiatus, he ends up riding for Madrid. Years later, he ends up on Pal Peralta, and in 1985, he goes pro. Interesting fact, it's the same year that Mark Gonzalez goes pro. This is really important because they are two pioneers of street skateboarding. Interesting to note, that his pro board didn't come out for a year after he was announced as pro. And at the end of that year, he got a bonus check for $500 and he didn't make any other money that year besides what he made off of contests. It kind of gives a bit of context for how big or small the skateboard industry was at that time. Tommy G's first pro model graphic had a hot rod influence, but George Powell didn't really like that one. So they went over to VCJ and they got it redrawn with still some hot rod influence. This graphic is still probably one of the most iconic skateboard graphics of all time. Over the years, many people have gotten it tattooed. Tommy G said in an interview that he actually hates it when people get this graphic tattooed. And earlier this year, an original board from the original printing of this graphic sold for $17,000. Some other interesting facts about Tommy is he was one of the first members of the Bones Brigade. He filmed his entire future primitive part in just one day and He's a professional musician. You'll recognize his music from lots of different skateboard videos, from Bones Brigade, Adidas, Stereo, the DC video, the North video, the Converse video, and EA Skate. Over the years, he's played with big bands like Black Flag, Suicidal Tendencies, and other big bands. It's cool to know that Tommy was honored at the 2013 Trans World Awards by winning the Legend Award. It's important to note that Tommy's just a good human. He's been well documented over the years for his progressive stance on things like racism and other social injustices. Jim T. Jim T goes pro for Pal Peralta at an early age. He's featured in videos like Public Domain and Search for Animal Chin. He later leaves Pal Peralta to go skate for SMA with Natus. His video parts there were in Santa Cruz Speed Freaks and Reason for Living. He's also been the cover boy of many of your favorite skateboard magazines over the years. Like Tommy, Jim has always been known for standing up for marginalized groups and for speaking out on cultural issues. Again, we think this is a really important fact because this brand is run by two amazing human beings that stand up for something. We believe that he has become the gold standard of how skater-owned companies should be ran. He is also the vice chair at the Skate Park Project with Tony Hawk. A funny fact, is that he also plays the character Rags in the 1988 Hollywood horror flick 976 Evil. This is the first movie directed by Robert Englund, aka Freddy Krueger from The Nightmare on Elm Street. The start. After a six year career on Pal Peralta, Tommy was kind of get the feeling that he was about to be replaced by the next big thing. He was put off by some comments from the TM of Pal Peralta at the time, they were at a contest and he said, do you even still skate? Both Jim and Tommy had said to each other, they're both worn down and worn out from the way that skateboard companies were being run and from touring and contests all the time. The two of them decided they want to start their own thing. So they go and talk to Fausto Vitello, which you might remember from some of our other episodes was the creator of Thrasher Magazine and Independent Trucks. Tommy goes and tells Stacy Peralta from Pal Peralta that he wants to leave the team. Stacy was really bummed because his dream was that each of the Bones Brigade members would start their own sub-brands underneath Pal Peralta. It's also interesting to note that Tommy leaving caused kind of a house of cards effect because not long after, a bunch of different team riders left. In 1991, they found real skateboards. 
Jim and Tommy were the big name pros, which helped them get boards into skate shops. The original team was Jim and Tommy, Henry Sanchez, Sluggo, Max Schaff, and Kelly Bird. They were touring around doing free demos for shops to promote the brand. And Tommy said that he went from making 80K a year with Powell down to 30K a year with Real. It was an interesting time for the skateboard industry because usually it was run by these mega brands like Powell and Santa Cruz. And here comes Real. In the first Real ad that ever came out, he was wearing a Real t-shirt, but he was actually riding a Powell board. The logo. The Real Oval logo was drawn by Kevin Ansel. If you didn't know, back in the 90s, oval logos were actually really popular. So an oval real logo wasn't that out of the ordinary. He's the same guy that drew the Spitfire Big Head logo while he was working at Deluxe. He was friends with Fosto back in the day. He grew up skating and surfing in Venice. And when he was super young, he was actually homeless in Venice. And he was kind of raised by the surfers and the skaters in the area. Folklore says that Kevin, when he was young, was actually adopted by Craig Stesick, who was the guy that did a lot of the marketing for Powell Peralta and Bones Brigade. Death threats. After riding for Powell and Peralta and NHS, Jim wanted his first pro board to be impactful. Jim hits up his old friend, Natus Kopis, who's running 101 skateboards at the time, and Kevin and Cell. And together they come and make the Hanging Klansman graphic. It came out originally in 1990 and since then has been ripped off and redone so many different times by skate shops and other brands over the years. It was originally made in reference to where 28 Klansmen were given the right to march in Washington and they were escorted by thousands of police officers at the time. At the time, the KKK had a heavy presence in the United States. There were skate shops all over the country that were afraid to bring in the boards and Jim T personally got hate mail and death threats. There was also loads of people that heavily backed the graphic and what it was about, and they sent in photos of them getting the logo tattooed on their bodies. Soon after this graphic came out, they decided to do a tour of the Deep South. At one of the demos, they had a huge group of skinheads that showed up. They were very nervous for what was going to happen next. At the end of the demo, this group of skinheads approached them, and they ended up being members from a group called Sharp. Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. This group made t-shirts of that graphic and they actually wanted to hand one personally to Jim T. Jim tells this story in the Disposable Skate Artwork book written by Sean Cliver. Jim has done other anti-KKK graphics over the years, including the Hooded Order graphic and the Wrench Justice graphic. Mark Gonzalez. Later on, Mark Gonzalez gets added to the team and he's kind of obviously treated like royalty. He's featured in their videos, Kicked Out of Everywhere, Nonfiction, and Real to Real. Gons was voted most influential skateboarder of all time by Transworld Skateboarding. He's the head skater at Adidas, a lead artist for Supreme, and featured in EA Skate. Not only is he the pioneer of street skateboarding along with Tommy, he's also the first one to skate a street handrail, and he is molded and shaped what street skateboarding is today. Gons got heavily involved in the graphics over the years for real. Todd Francis, who did most of the art for real at the time, worked with Gons. Over the years, they ended up kind of razzing each other and screwing with each other like friends do. One of the times, Gons actually accused Francis of hiding a dick in one of his graphics. The graphic was of a horse race, and Gons accused Francis of drawing a dick into the riding crop in the jockey's hand. Francis claims that it was not intentional, but he could definitely see it after Gons pointed it out. He tells this story in his book, Look Away, The Art of Todd Francis. As well, if you look back over the boards for real, you can see where Crooked has got his artwork and its inspiration from. In 2002, he eventually leaves to start Crooked Skateboards underneath the deluxe umbrella, but that's another story for another episode. Hell's Angels. Also in the Todd Francis book, he talks about when he did a Hells Angels ripoff graphic. They did a real skateboards graphic that was ripping off the Hells Angels logo. The HA was not happy with this. HA sent some threats to Deluxe, and they demanded that every single board be returned so that they could deal with them. After that, all the boards were gathered and returned to the HA. The rumor goes that the HA put them all in a pile and lit them all on fire and burned them. But from that point forward, there was kind of 
this looming general threat towards Deluxe and the guys there, that they would come around and beat these guys up for what they did. So Todd Francis actually said that he planned an escape route from the art department in his office, which included jumping out of a second story window. Famous artists. Real has worked with some legendary artists over the years. Some of our favorites have been Nadas Copas, Shepard Ferry, Mark Gonzalez, Pusshead, Cause, D-Face, Jeremy Fish, and Todd Francis. Let us know which artists were missing and what were your favorite graphics by these artists. Real videos. Over the years, Real has let out some of the most iconic skateboard videos of all time. This includes the Real video in 1993, Nonfiction in 1997, Kicked Out of Everywhere in 1999, Real to Real in 2001, Roll Forever in 2005, Since Day One in 2011, Be Free in 2020, and a ton more. Ashad Ware. Ashad Ware is the best skateboarder in the entire world, ranked by us. It would be criminal to do a video on Real and not give him his own section. We love him so much that every Real video that he has been in, we've re-edited for him to have last part. Ashad burst onto the skateboard scene in the mid-2000s, riding for Rain Skate, owned by Chris Cole. He took everyone by storm when he switch flipped the Love Gap, and he sent out sponsor tapes to so many different companies, including Baker and Toy Machine. But he ultimately ended up on Real. He goes pro for Real in 2011. He wins Thrasher Skateboarder of the Year in 2013. In 2016, he launched his pro model version of the Nike SB Dunks. And rumor has it that he might have an Ashad Pro shoe coming out in the new year. With Real, he released his signature Twin Tip Skateboard, which is our top selling skateboard in our shop. He also has a stacked resume of video parts with Real, Spitfire, and Nike SB. He's also a lover of vintage BMWs. He's become such a celebrity in it, you can even find him on the BMW website. And fun fact, he's one of the only skateboarders that has had a pro cookie sponsorship, Anthony's Cookies. Actions realized. Real has been a pioneer in giving back with skateboarding. They believe that skateboarding can be a positive source for change in the world. Their program, Actions Realized, is where they raise money for charities that they believe to be important. Some of the ones that they've done in the past include Unity Skateboarding, the Harold Hunter Foundation, Hurricane Sandy, they teamed up with Green Day and did an event for the Oakland Children's Hospital, they partnered with Humidity Skate Shop to help United We Stand, they did one with Steve Olson called Let the People Paint, they did Why So Sad with John Ratray, raising awareness for mental health. They even did boards with Braille on them for Dan Mancina. If you want to learn more on any of these causes or charities, hit the link below and there will be more information. Famous graphics. Over the years, Real has done a ton of famous graphics. For the most part, they've been controversial. Some of them have included the Texas Chainsaw graphic, the Hanging Klansman that we talked about, Political Wrench, F This Clown graphic, the Wrench Justice 2.0 graphic, Cops to Swerve and Neglect, and the Hanging Segway graphic. Modern Real. In modern day, Real and Antihero are tied for having the most Thrasher Skateboarder of the Years on their team at one time. They are stacked teams. Their current team includes Ashad Ware, Kyle Walker, Mason Silva, Chima Ferguson, Dennis Businitz, Jack Olson, Jake Donnelly, Tanner Van Vark, Davis Torgerson, Justin Brock, Robbie Brockle, Zion Wright, and legends Keith Huffnagel and Max Shaft. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's the way the cookie crumbles in the jungle. Let us know below any points that we missed. Guys, we want to give you more of this content, so like, subscribe, comment, and of course, support your local skate shop. That's the biggest thing and the best way for you to keep skateboarding alive. I'm Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and you just watched 14 things you didn't know about real skateboards. Let us know what brand we should do next. Stay tuned for Comment of the Week. Oh! <laughs> Comment of the Week, we got a spicy one. It is from my dog, my homie, someone close to my heart, Ethan underscore skates with an eight and a Z. He says, 
Can you do 14 things you didn't know about real skateboards? Dude, where have you been the last 10 minutes? You just Did you just watch history happen? All right, man. Let us know where you guys are watching from. See you next week. Peace.